Hey, it's some old guy coding again, and in this episode, we're gonna make a case for this uh, alarm for the for the mother-in-law's chair, and uh, you're gonna watch me go through Fusion 360, my design process, and and while I've edited out as much think time as uh, I think I could, um, it's still a very lengthy, and I make a bunch of mistakes, and, uh, and you never know, it might be educational, but if you have the patience to sit through it, it it is quite long. Um, Otherwise, feel free to skip to the next episode, and uh, depending on how you feel, or look at it a little bit and see if you can get the gist of the idea. So, thanks much, and let's get started. So we're just going to draw this guy out a little bit, and we'll take some measurements. So we got the outer board here, rough drawing, and then we have a button here, a button there, a buzzer, and three LEDs. Not appropriately set up here, but we're just going to take some measurements. So, we're zero, then we're in millimeters. So, the um, the board width is uh, we'll call it sixty. And then the board height. Should be measuring it like this, right? Nah. Oops, it's off. There we go. Let me measure it this way. Make sure they're getting the right to measurement. It's 80. This one should be 60. Yep. So then we need the um, diameter of uh, this guy, which we're not going to show all the way through, I don't think. I don't think so. We might cover him up. Maybe not. We'll see. Anyway, the outside diameter is uh, about 20. We'll call it 23. And then just so we know the inside diameter of that beeper is uh, about five. So just so we know how big the hole is. The size of the buttons, um, there's two ridges on here. The outside ridge is uh, 13 and the inside is 12. Okay, and then the diameter of the LEDs. You could just probably put a box down here so that they show through. I'll go ahead and just grab one right here, and they're 5 millimeter. All right, I think we've got what we need there. So we've got the overall dimensions. Now I'm just going to grab a picture of it from the top. I'll just go like, let's go like that. Just to get an idea of the placement. Yep. We got it. So we'll line that up upstairs and overlay that on our drawing here. Um, I don't know if you can do that in Fusion 360 or not, but we'll give her a try. And we'll start a case uh, design. Oops, we need one more um, measurement. And uh, let's get the height of the board with the speaker on it. There's some wire behind here, so we should count that in too. Should make it uh, spacious enough that it won't bind up. So let's make it uh, 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters thick. 
can see we can get those buttons to stick out a little bit. 20 millimeters thick. All right, let's go design a uh, case for this guy. Okay, some old guy coding again. Now we're gonna make a case for that uh, alarm controller for the mother-in-law's chair alarm. And uh, let's see if we can figure out how to bring in an image here, because we took a picture of a uh, took a picture downstairs. Uh, decal. Uh, oh, attached canvas. That's the one we want, I think. We'll pick that level there. That uh, right there. And then, uh, whoops, click it again. So it's selected, and then we'll go out and pick the, the canvas. Um, let's see, this is uh, there and there. And uh, I went in and took this image uh, in, uh, into an editing program and rotated the picture a little bit to get uh, you know, the perspective I did had wasn't perfect. But I was trying to get this more rotated so that it was uh, uh, vertical. Uh, it looks like I'm still not quite happy with it. But uh, in any case, we're just going to start with that. So I think we're just going to say, OK, that looks good to me. Uh, I don't need to rotate it or anything. Um, we can leave it right at the zero point there. That's, that's fine for now. All right. So now the next thing we want to do is make sure that we know how big this thing is. So there's a function in here. Uh, you go to the canvas, click on that, right click, calibrate. So we want to pick two points on here. Let's pick the larger points. Um, just because I assume that'll be a little more accurate. So we'll go right on top of that edge, and we'll go right on top of uh, this 20, between 19 and 20, to some 20. So we'll go right up here to that side, and that's uh, 8 millimeters. When we took our measurement down there, the large side was 80 millimeters, actually. So let's go ahead and just type in 80. And hit enter and whoo <laughs> close up of a board there we are that's better all right so now we have this to scale all right one thing we're going to have to do that i forgot here is take that image and turn the opacity down that'll do it so that we can see through the darn thing. There we go. We can always turn it back up again if we need to. A little confusing. Let's do a. Let's go ahead and create a cube then, or a box. And we know that the uh, inside space on the box. Let's just go ahead and draw one here. We know that the inside space on the box, and it's drawing on this other plane, and I'm not sure why but we'll take care of that. We know that the inside dimensions of the box need to be uh, about 80 by 60 by 20 to allow space in there. There's 80, let's make that one 60, and we'll make this one 20 just like that. All right. So we're going to take this and set that down on that image. We'll hide that center now again. Hide the origin. All right. So it looks like that's uh, not too bad there, huh? It's actually it's below the below the image. Let's put it back on the image there. There, so that's until the image shows up. Right there. All right. Let's see how that looks. Let's darken that sketch just a little more. The canvas, rather. Got a canvas. Okay. 
So it looks like it's going to fit um, the board itself, but of course we have this cable coming out the back side here too, um, off and, and, and the Wemos board that seems to hang over a little bit. So let's go ahead and expand this guy right there to make sure that we have, you know, we'll plug the cable in. We'll have a hole to plug the cable in and then the hole can help support the cable from getting uh, twisted or yanked. We also need to add some sort of a, a cable uh, support there too. We'll work on that here in a minute once we get this all set up. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take that and make it just a little bit bigger and we'll make that our, our shell. I was trying to think here. I'm planning, not planning very far ahead. So let's go ahead and modify scale and uh, we'll make it uniform. And we'll just enlarge that a little bit. All right. And let's go back and reposition that guy. That's how we like it. Oops, wrong plane. I'm just going to take that guy and, and move him a little bit there. Yeah, how about we go something like that? Alright, so let's go. Uh, we're we're going to be looking we'll print on this side so we can print the, the holes and everything on the side of the body. So let's go ahead and shell this guy out. Let's modify shell. Let's go with two millimeters. Want something that's going to be durable. And maybe we'll make that guy just a smidge larger. Just to make sure everything's going to fit nice in there with some space. And then we'll go back and recenter it again. So, there we go. It looks pretty good to me. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and start poking holes in this thing. We know that the uh, the buttons are um, Thirteen millimeters in the largest diameter. So let's go ahead and make a couple of circles here. Let's go uh, home and then top. Perfect. All right. So I'm create a cylinder, and it's going to be on uh, this box. And the outer diameter is 13, so let's go 14. Okay. Let's give it a height, arbitrary height. Um, in fact, it should probably be even taller than that. But it uh, looks like we've got that uh, button covered there. So let's go ahead and increase that. Whoops. And you know what it did here? It... Uh, did it make uh, that part of the same product, uh, same part of the same part? Yes, it's all part of the same part. So, you know, I could redraw that again, but instead let's just split that thing off of there. Um, I always miss the fact that it's going to join that new component. I find it irritating. So let's split the body. So then we got the body selected. Well, split point will be this uh, surface here. Uh, and now we have two parts again. So we'll go ahead and make that guy a little taller. Okay. And we're going to copy and paste. And we'll move that one right over here. Make sure that looks like it's got the button covered. Maybe just a hair that way. Okay. So there's that. 
And then we need a, uh, a hole for the speaker. So I'm hoping not to have to go all the way through with that. Let's just create another um, cylinder. I'll choose that plane. I'll put it in the middle. There. That should be that should be good enough. And it doesn't look like I'm quite centered on it, so let's move it just a little more. Not that. Let's grow that guy. Oh, let's move it. Move it. Oh, and it joined again, didn't it? It joined again. Not oh, bugger. I keep forgetting to disable that join. So let's let's split that again. Modify. Split body. This guy. With that face. There we are. Now it's a separate one. Let's go ahead and move him just a little bit here to uh, so he looks centered on that picture. There. There. I like that. And then down here we've got these three LEDs and we could make individual holes for those or we could just uh, make a uh, uh, opening in the case. Let's go ahead and expand this guy so it goes all the way through. Press pull. Of course, I've already shelled it. I guess I don't really need a very thick tool. And we'll just take a box. Pick the surface. And it doesn't need to be really tight. You can have a little space in there. There we go. And we'll pull that up just a little bit. And of course, once again, I did the same thing as attached. Uh, it's early in the morning. I'm brain dead. So we'll split the body. And we'll take this surface again. And split that part off. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these three or four parts and push them down through the shell. Just like that. So if we look underneath, they're all sticking out down there. And, you know, I... They're not really centered. When I look at it down here, it's more obvious. They're not really centered on there like I would expect. Um, well, I guess this guy is more over on the edge there, so I think that's fine. All right, so let's take it, and we're going to go ahead and um, just cut out those bodies. So we're going to do a combine. We're going to pick our target body. We're going to say cut. And then we'll just start clicking here. And all those guys go away just like that. There we can see we've got holes in the box now. And the next thing is that uh, we want to make sure that we have a place to plug this cable in over here. So let's take another box. And uh, we'll just make a hole over here for our cable. And there's the connector right there. So it can be a little spacious, that's fine. Yeah, I think that'll work. We'll just cut right through that box like that. There. Yeah, maybe we'll make it just a little bit bigger just to make sure that the... I have a tendency to make these holes too small for those cables. You know, and then it just doesn't fit. Oops, and did we cut through the case a little bit? We did. We cut through the top of the case there. So let's go ahead and fix that first. We're going to take this guy, we're going to do a push-pull right on that, and pick the arrow, and then we'll just click this other uh, area where we want it to line up with, and that will be gone. So, there. Take this guy, and push him out just a little bit more. And we'll take the other side. Mm. 
I'll just make that until we're happy with it. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to measure it or anything. Looks good. We'll use that. Right, now we're going to need a place for the, the uh, wire for the pad to come out here too. So let's go ahead and just make another box. Ah, not that. And we'll do it on the uh, end here. And we'll just make a slot all the way out there to slide that cable through. We'll just push that through the case, just like that. There, it's cut. All right, and then nobody likes um, totally square edges because they, they hurt. So let's go ahead and do a, a, a fillet on the inside here just to give it some additional strength inside, especially if we're going to be uh, cutting off some of those outside edges there. Oops, not that one, this one. And uh, then over here, oh, come on. And looks like I got the wrong part there. No, that's right. Okay, so we're just going to pull those guys out to give it a little softening on the inside there. Just a little extra strength inside. Yep, so let's grab those, all, all three of those holes, all four of those holes, and we'll just move them over a little bit. And let's grab faces, uh, select uh, priority, face priority. I'll grab these guys, see if they'll let me do that, even though I've kind of chamfered that one. You might have to undo that a little bit. And then uh, let's go ahead and grab that guy. Do we need to grab that guy? I don't think so. I think that one's okay. Let's go ahead and move those. There. That looks a little more centered to me, and I think there's room for that board to slide over there. I think that's going to be fine. That looks good. Let me just take the whole box and move it over just a little bit to match up with the picture again. Not the face, we want the whole box this time. Priority body. Move. There. That's a little more aesthetically pleasing there, I think. And, and I think I will lengthen this hole a little bit on the right side. Oh, not that. This. We want to press and pull, and I want that part right there. There we go. I'll just make them a little larger. And let's go ahead and just shorten that guy up on this end. I really don't think uh, it needs to be that tall over there. So let's just take a, a construction plane an offset plane, we'll offset it from that spot and we'll just uh, go down here arbitrarily we'll split body and we'll pick the uh, construction plane as the splitting point go ahead and split that and then I'm just going to pull, uh, we'll hide that construction plane there we go, and I'm just going to pull this guy back in there, like that. Alright, then we'll go ahead and combine those two parts again. Oops, looks like there's going to be an issue there with this hole. We can fix that. We'll do a press and pull. And we'll grab uh, that surface there, and we'll just push it back. We're going to be not needing that anyway. It still connects up. So now let's go ahead and do a combine. Not cut. Join. There. All right. So I'm I'm fairly happy with that. I think. Oops, we rounded the inside. We should round the outside too a little bit. So let's go ahead and do a 
hopefully again. I think I've got all the edges there. I'll go ahead and just round that off just a little bit. Just so the edges aren't quite so hard. Alright, what have I forgotten? Oh, we need to make a base for this guy. So let's go ahead and uh, make a box. start from the top here. Makes more sense to me. We're going to pick that to put it there and then we'll just make a box like that. And it looks like it can be a little longer this way probably. In fact, I'm going to make it quite a bit longer each of those ways because I'm going to put a, uh, a, a cable restraint and screw mounts on the base. So, make that that way. We can go this way. Let's go this way. Let's move this to the other side now. Okay. And let's subtract out the shape of the top body from the bottom body here. So I'm going to make a copy of the uh, top of the shell. There it is. There's an extra copy. Just Control C, Control V. Then we're going to cut that one out of there. We're going to cut one copy out of it. This is the body. The tool is going to be this part. And we're going to cut. No. There we go. So if we take this part, the top of the body, and just hide it momentarily, let's call that uh, top. We'll call this base. Whoops. Call this a base. Take the top and just hide it for a second. And we can take those sketches, uh, the canvas doesn't hide them too now, I think we're done with that. Let's go ahead and just, uh, whoops. I want to make this inner part lower than the outer part here. So, uh, looks like we need to do a little splitting. Let's just go ahead and split this body in spots. That'll make the life easier here. We'll uh, modify split body. So we're going to split this body. Uh, first, oops. Let's do that again. Repeat split body. We already got selected. So let's find the tools here. We're going to select it on that plane. Can we select multiple planes? I don't know. Can we? No. So let's split it there. Actually, repeat split body. I want to split it right on this surface here. And then we're also going to go back and split it on this surface here. Oops, I'm just go split body. And we'll pick the uh, tool. And it's going to be this outer surface right in there. There we go. So now that we get that split apart, we can take this inner surface here and do a press and pull. I think. Nope. So why did that split? Let's do that again. Modify. Split body. Grab this outer surface over here. There we go. There. No, it still has not split. And why is that? Uh, one error. Spline six. 
split six more info compute failed well that's nice that's not very useful is it so what if we split it on the inside plane here repeat split body we'll suck the tool in here still does not split that's what I didn't do. I want to go up here and say uh, do not capture design history because that always just pisses me off. Apparently I'm not a good designer. Alright, so now we're going to take that plane and take that guy off. Delete. And we're going to insert a plane. Well, maybe let's try that sketch by our split body again. Maybe that will work now that we have the uh, design history off one more time because I've never seen that fail before let's put it right there aha uh -huh, and that was it I found it so let's go ahead and press this inside part down and we're going to select the outside edge here so it is flush out there now and that inside part should just disappear like that. Let's take a look at that canvas one more time. So we have the um, pad wire coming out on this side. Alright, so I'm taking here a little bit trying to decide what to do. Let's go ahead and combine uh, these base parts again. And make that a join just like that and I'm just gonna go ahead and make this guy just a little the base just a little shorter there that's not too bad maybe just a little more there we go there I'll match up with that so let's go ahead and maybe soften some of these edges here particularly the outside corners like that. Let's go ahead and hide that part. And I'm going to take this and run that slot all the way down. There we go. Let's just take it right off of there. And just extrude that out. How about that? And it won't get confused. Boom. Just like that. All right. And we should soften these corners a little bit too. Okay, there, there. That will work. Let's hide that top. We'll bring the base back up again. And I think we can lose the. Um, canvas one more time now with these cables coming out here I wanted to add some sort of a cable restraint and we need a place to uh, screw holes to mount this with on both sides so let's just start with a cube or box I'll we'll put it right on the surface here something like that make sure that it's a new body there we go <clears throat> bulk that up a little bit there and maybe we'll just go simple let's go ahead and make a, another one on the other side for the other wire And we'll soften the edges on that too. 
You guys can probably come up with a better design than this, but um, I think that's what it's going to be today. Make sure we get all those edges. I should have done this before I copied of it. That would have been the smart thing to do, but. And uh, this one, and then we can come back and get that guy. Alright, so let's go ahead and soften those up. And we should soften this outside edge here too with another press pull. Get the whole thing this time. Oh, there we go. There we go. We'll just soften that whole edge up a bit too. And maybe we'll just take the very sharpest edge off of, uh, let's uh, do a fillet. And we'll do a very uh, soft edge right there just so that the cable doesn't get cut or anything. There. Now these are individual bodies, so I was thinking just run the wire underneath and kind of screw these on just to clamp the wire a bit. And... Uh, so let's go ahead and just put a couple of mounting holes right in the middle here and we'll use the same screws that we used for mount to apply pressure to the wires that come out. So let's go ahead and make a couple of holes here. Create, uh, where is it here? Hole, there. Right in the middle there. We'll make it just a little smaller. <laughs> and, uh, see, a quarter inch is 6.35, so I'm not going to use anything that big. Just make sure that it, uh, it's not going to be a quarter inch, definitely. Just make sure that this makes it all the way through. And, uh, you know, I didn't like that. Let's do it a different way. Let's do it a different way. Let's take and create a cylinder. And then we can pick the uh, center here, I think. Can we? No. We'll just align it. And we'll make it... Uh, make it uh, 5 millimeters. grow it. Let's go ahead and align that then. The other things, yeah, they're not quite aligned, are they? Oops, once again I did that same thing again. I made it a complete body, so let's go ahead and split that off. Body. There. Now we'll have a separate part. Yep. Just pick these three parts and just move them down a little bit. We'll just eyeball them. And we'll take uh, this guy. Kind of eyeball him. I think he could move over just a little bit. Maybe there. Not sure if I made it better or worse, but let's take this now, we'll copy it, and we'll make another one right down here. Make sure he looks like he's in the center of that box that way. And it looks like I could move this guy over just a little bit to center him on this axis. Just like that. Let's take both of these guys and we'll push them down through. We also need to make an extra copy because we have multiple bodies to cut here. We have an extra copy. So let's copy the base, or rather we'll cut the base. We're going to split body. We're going to do a combine. There's the base, and we'll take the two tools right there and right there, and we'll cut. 
and then we have the two uh, supports up here that we're going to do that again on. Can we do two parts at the same time? No, we can't. So we'll do it like this. Repeat, combine this one and that one. And we'll do the same thing over here. Repeat, combine, and pick that guy. Whoops. Just start over. This guy is going to be that one, and then that one. All right, perfect. Then we have a place to put uh, some screws through there, and that can act. Uh, we can just slip the cable underneath. We don't have to add a whole lot of pressure. It just needs to be on on the chair someplace. And we could do a. Uh, a chamfer in here for the head of the screw. <clears throat> I don't think we can do that one too, can't we? Yep. Same time, we'll just do both of those, something like that. That's not too bad. Okay. Let's show the top then again. So this uh, this connector is probably going to be coming off the board a little bit higher. Why don't we go ahead and um, let's do this. We're going to take this guy, we're going to move him down just a little bit. Just like that. And make a copy him. Whoops. Go and we'll put him up uh, where we think we're going to need him up here. Probably something like at that height, where that cable comes off the board and back. Okay, I think I kind of like that better. So let's go ahead and subtract out that piece out of the base here, just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that surface and we're going to pull that guy up to um, be up there. there. And that'll support that uh, USB cable. Uh, more at a proper angle. Of course, the uh, the plug will be coming out on that end, I assume. Yeah, the plug will probably show through a little bit. So what we're going to do for that... Split body. So I'll take this guy and uh, let's get a splitting plane here. Let's go ahead and make a construction plane. Once again, we'll let the construction planes show up. No, oh, we don't have any, so we should be good. So let's make it on this surface here, and then we're just going to bring it back a little bit. That'll work. So now let's go ahead and split this body. And then the splitting plane will be this guy right here. I'll go ahead and split that guy out. Let's grab these two parts, or these three part, no, two parts, and let's move those out a little bit so that we know that the connector head is going to be able to fit in there without being under the clamp. And then we'll take this and we'll just push, uh, push this back so they connect. Just like that. We'll overlap without not going too far. Actually, we could do it like this. Let's undo that. Let's grab this push pull. This is playing right there. Click on that arrow and then we'll pick click on um no, oh, that won't work. It only works if it's this surface apparently. I click back there. Oh, there, I can click on that. Ta-da! Then it'll be perfectly matched. And we'll go ahead and join those back up with a combine. That guy. Join. There we go. All right. So now I think I'm a little happier with it. It's 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 not very pretty, but it's gonna be rugged. The mother-in-law can then, if she finds the cord and starts yanking on it, uh, hopefully it won't rip out the ends. Um, also surprise, surprise, uh, supplies a little extra support for the USB end so that it accidentally doesn't come unplugged and we don't know about it and the alarm's not going off. 
and uh, for ease of removing this base part from the surface of the print bed let's go ahead and put a bit of a chamfer around that edge just like that a little bit doesn't take too much and we've softened that edge a little bit too and just so we don't cut any cables let's go ahead and uh, do a similar thing we'll use a chamfer again on uh, that surface and that surface let's see I think we gotta pull this part up a little bit be able to see that pull him up yeah and there isn't a bottom surface on that one so that's nice so let's go ahead and repeat that chamfer There, just on the three pieces. There, not there. Here and here. Doesn't have to be much. There it is. All right, let's uh, we'll start saving these parts as STLs. Uh, this will print the other way around. So let's go ahead and reorient that. Just like that. We just move it away. So there's our parts. Let's go ahead and save as STLs. <clears throat> and this is going to be the top. Oops. Again. Save as STL. Top. And these two parts should be identical, but I'm not sure that they are, so we'll go ahead and just export them separately. Port one. Make this guy alter two. Make him support two. <clears throat> All right. Import those guys in. And we're going to take all those guys and just kind of move them back in this corner because I know that corner is working better for me for printing. I still need to get in there and um, relevel that, uh, relevel the plate out there. So let's see what our settings are. I think that should be fine. Let's go ahead and see what that's going to look like. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Don't need to add too much pressure to those cables. How thick is this wall going to be? Oh yeah, that's going to be plenty thick there. Yep, that'll be good and strong. That way in case it gets bumped when we're moving furniture or doing stuff, it will uh, be okay. It's going to cost uh, about $3 and take about four, four and a half hours to print. So we'll go ahead and put that out here for... Um, Our alarm case. So let's get connected to the printing machine down here. We'll turn that on. Add the G code to the list here. There it is. We'll hit print. And sometime later today should be done. We'll come back and check on that. Thanks for watching.